Hi, my name is Marsh Pozetek and in this video, I would like to show you how you can create a fancy looking people picker in adaptive cards. Uh, well, the one that allows you to display names and pictures of the people, like the real people picker with uh, people cards, not just a simple drop down uh, that possibly you're using. Basically, uh, whenever you would be thinking about the people picker in active cards, uh, you should probably, you would probably uh, select for the first the choice set, and in that choice set, you would set uh, the values of choices to be like person one, person two, their emails, and so on. Uh, but, oh, scared, don't be scared, or, or, or um, don't look no longer, because what I'm going to show you is how you can actually change that simple choice set into a real people picker. And actually there is a very good documentation around that. So once you navigate to the URL you can find it in the description below, uh, you'll be uh, well moved to this to this page. And uh, well here about uh, apart from from some business uh, explanations like when to use the people pickers, uh, there is as well information about how to implement. So basically what you have to do is to use that choice set control I just showed you but you need to add some new metadata, which is not available directly within a designer. So that you cannot simply set it anywhere here. This is not possible to be set. So instead you need to navigate to K card payload editor and then to uh, navigate to your choice. So here is the choice set that I have just added, right? And you have to modify it. First, what you have to do is to get rid of all the choices. Now, when you do that, you will see that the input choice set must have at least one choice defined. So that's the warning information, the validation information that in a designer, it will let you go. Like it will allow you to move on and uh, well, to simply copy the JSON of the card. However, if you would like to use the same JSON, for example, in the new Microsoft Teams trigger, uh, the compose box trigger, then you won't be able to save your design. So what you have to do is to actually leave at least one choice. It doesn't matter because those choices are not going to be anyhow possible to be selected uh, from the adaptive card. All right, so I'll just leave one. And uh, this way I'm not seeing the warning message or the validation message. The next thing what you have to do is to add this choices data property and the data set property. Uh, in the end, it will look something like that, right? So you have the choices data and the data set and the tape uh, property and yeah, properties. So you have to get these and simply place it inside your uh, inside your uh, definition of your choice set. You need to as well because you want to get information from that choice set define its ID. So the next thing is that you have to set it ID. Remember about that because this, those IDs are really important. Uh, let's just format the document. So right now, uh, oh, some some information was lost. So let me just add it once again, and then format the document. So now I have the choices data uh, object with the type and data set properties inside. And the last thing that you can define is either you want to allow the multi selection or the single selection. So how many? Uh, people, uh, objects you would like allow user to select. So right now it's true or it's false. And that's a property that is coming directly from the choice set uh, configuration. So when you navigate the choice set, uh, you have here uh, as well the information about the multi selection, right? So it can be uh, set to true or false, then it's up to you. Uh, and then there is as well possibility to pre select values. So if you would like to uh, pre-select information, you need to add the value attribute with a list of Azure IDs of the users you want to be pre-selected. So for example, Azure ID 1, Azure ID 2, Azure ID 3, right? So that's the uh, value, uh, that's the value of the value property you can add to your choice set. And uh, well, that's it. As you can see here, you can as well add some uh, static choices. So um, you can simply provide this static people picker options that you want to allow users to choose from. Uh, that is again, depending on the scenario you want to fulfill. 
The point is that because this adaptive card now is looking up the graph Microsoft Com users on the behalf of the user who is displaying the card, therefore it is not going to work in the preview mode. So in the preview mode here in adaptive card, which is totally disconnected from the graph, you are not able to see how it works. However, once you copy it and then paste it into Microsoft Power Automate uh, action that generates adaptive card for Microsoft Teams, then you'll see it working. And so here I have a quite simple demo uh, that is called the uh, user reassignment request. This workflow uh, is being assigning or this workflow assigns a task and then is waiting for the approval, but is waiting for the approval only for two minutes. And after two minutes, the action is timed out. And once it is timed out, it is going then to uh, send this action, this adaptive card to Microsoft Teams, to the channel, with the request to reassign this task to someone else. And then once the task is reassigned, then it is simply starting a new approval for the new person uh, who should then complete the whole uh, business logic of the approval. All right, ready? So let me show you how it works. I'll just uh, move back to, um, to the definition and run it. Oh, one thing maybe just to explain this, uh, this workflow, it says it is premium. And the reason why it is premium is because it is using this get web resource action to get uh, users picture so that this user's picture can be added to the adaptive card sent to Microsoft Teams so that uh, apart from information about who is the current assignee, there is as well their picture uh, displayed and that I'm doing through um, this um, get web resource Azure AD action. So this is why this action, this, this workflow, this Cloudflow is marked as premium. All right, so now let's just wait two minutes. It's only two minutes, so in a moment it should uh, be ready. So let's see if, uh, if the timeout has been already applied, right? So the timeout was reached, the, the action seemed to be timed out, and now the workflow went to the right branch where it got obtained the picture of gen researchers and sent the people picker uh, action uh, or the uh, sorry card to my Microsoft Teams. So then I'll go to my Microsoft Teams. And now to uh, the channel where uh, the request for reassignment was sent. So here, as said, uh, there is this card sent that is requesting the reassignment of the existing task. Uh, it is now assigned to general researcher. There is a picture obtained through Graph API and a button for reassignment. And here, uh, as you can see, is this picker where it doesn't display the list of all employees, of course, in my tenant, because that would be really a huge value. But whenever I start typing, uh, for example, Tomasz at, well, it does, it does display the list of uh, accounts matching what I'm typing in. So I'll reassign this to myself. And because in my case, this field is set to only single choice, therefore I'm not able to type anything else and then simply confirm. Now, once I navigate back to uh, my card, or my, sorry, my, my cloud flow here, you'll see that now it has been resumed. And now information that this action returns um, is quite limited, but at least it's important enough or it contains en enough information to follow up uh, with that card. So again, it displays or contains information about who responded, uh, what was the action that was used, and what is the Azure ID of the person or of the users that were selected in the people picker card uh, field. So in my case, because it was just a single choice, this is just a single uh, user, user ID. Uh, if there were more people than as you saw in the documentation, it would be just a string semicolon del uh, comma delimited uh, of the Azure IDs. So the next step, what it's doing is getting the user profile for the given UPN. So all the information about myself and is now assigning a card to myself so now once I navigate to my tasks, I will obviously have this 
document needs approval, so let's just complete it. And the workflow can be completed this way. So with that, uh, I was able to really complete the whole approval. Oh, that's, that's interesting why the workflow failed, even though it was completed successfully. All right, I don't know. Uh, maybe that's something for debugging later. Nevertheless, um, the approval was completed. Uh, everything went fine. What we could do as well uh, in here is to make a small modification to uh, the people picker field so that it is narrowed down. I mean, that the options that are displayed or available are narrowed down to uh, only those which are present within the current uh, conversation, within the context of the current conversation. Uh, to do that, you need to modify uh, this path here that is used to uh, build the data set. So following the documentation in here, you need to change it from uh, the simple graph Microsoft Com uses into uh, scope current context. So you need to add this current context uh, and then it will be narrowed down to either a chat or channel in which the, uh, the particular card is sent. So let's try it out. Now I'll just add here this uh, scope current context and I will as well update uh, this card, this action, so it doesn't wait two minutes uh, until it's time out. Well, let's say it will just waiting five seconds. All right, so let's test it again. Okay, okay, and run. So now it's running. And once I receive now the card, it should be just in a moment, right? So there is new card. Uh, and for example, uh, when I move up in this conversation, I see that it usually was a conversation between myself and John. So I don't expect there should be like Stefan present. So let's try and reassign it to Stefan, for example. Okay, Stefan possibly was present here as well. Uh, but you remember that uh, in my previous attempt, I had like two Tomashes. I mean, there was Tomash uh, as a CEO, so that record. And there was uh, there was as well the other one, which was um, the local Azure ID uh, admin account. And right now, because that other account was never mentioned anywhere here in this conversation, in this, uh, in this team, in this channel, Therefore, I cannot choose that other person, right? So um, this is how it works. And it helps you to really narrow down the list of, uh, of the choices to only like people within the conversation or this, this chat, this, this communication, this channel. And therefore, it helps you as well to limit, uh, for example, between uh, whom this task can be handled because because uh, in, in, like in this scenario, it is sent to a specific channel and therefore I assume that only people from that channel should be um, those to whom it should be reassigned and therefore um, adding this scope that narrows down the, the list is a good idea. So with that, uh, it will just help you to make your workflows even smarter. And as you so this is how you can, for example, use the people picker field within Microsoft Teams, uh, adaptive cards, and not only Microsoft Teams adaptive cards, but basically in adaptive cards. And of course, uh, once you navigate to the documentation, there is as well a number of other scenarios that you can actually utilize this people picker configuration for the regular choice set field and how you can uh, really benefit from using it. So, um, Yep, that's it. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please like the video. Uh, if you have any comments, then again, and as always, write them down below the video in the comments. I'll try to make my best to answer to all of them. And uh, yeah, that's all for now. Thank you once again for watching and until the next time. Bye bye.